defining the game, map control. So map control is something that I don't think is talked about enough. People don't understand what it is, what it means, what you can do with it. They don't understand any of that. So what I'm going to do is on Dust2, I think I've, I've done it before on Inferno. I've given my T-side philosophy on that. I've talked about it on Cash. I've given my uh, T-side and I think CT-side philosophy on that as well. I'm going to do it on Dust2. So map control. Brief recap, or if you haven't seen the other videos, means you control certain parts of the map where you can kind of control what the your opponent's doing. So map control for a terrorist, for example, would be taking control of this contestable area, which is catwalk, just this entire area. And that pushes the CTs back. I wish I could pull up my map at this point in time. Fuck it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw. I'm going to go spectate. I'm going to fucking draw on a fucking map. Here we go. Map control. So if we look at the map overview right here, what we can take from this is that the CTs will get to about this point at the same time as the terrorists get to this point. Terrorists will get to about this point at the same time as the CTs get to this point. Um, same shit. CTs will, uh, terrorists will get here when the CTs get like here or here. So what you have to do is these are all contestable areas. So this area here is contested. This area here is contested and this area here is contested. Uh, these are the points of entry for the terrorists to get into key areas. So the terrorists really want to keep the CTs back where they don't push past this point, past this point, past this point. When they keep the counter terrorists pushed back where they're holding in they, their own bomb sites, where they're playing in these areas, like this, and then in CT spawn, I don't know how to talk about CT spawn, but that's CT spawn, and then in middle like this, these are all common spots for counter terrorists to play. That's if the terrorists are controlling the map properly. Very simple to do so. You keep a guy outside of long, and that controls long doors. You keep a guy in tunnels in one of these various locations, and that keeps DCTs humble over at B. And then the last place remaining, which you need to absolutely take control of, is Catwalk. So you need to flush the counter terrace out of this area. This is the area that the terrorists want to attack. This is the area that the terrorists want to attack control the area of the map to control map control terrorists can take map control on dust 2 by smoking off mid doors flashing through mid doors that protects players to run up catwalk like so or to come from the xbox and boost up to catwalk other things they can do smoke sorry molotov or grenade sack the stairs flashes to come around and pop where any counter terrorists who are playing this spot on the ledge, or this spot here, or behind the bricks, they are taken off the angle. Once the terrorists have the control of this catwalk area, now the counter terrorists are all pushed back in their little sites. Goose, site, city spawn ramp, all the way down here. This is where all of the counter terrorists are playing over at the A bomb site. They know that. Cat is completely clear. Same thing over at B. The counter terrorists, they couldn't pass push past this point because you got a terrorist just sitting in tunnels keeping them humble again they are locked into this nice location here or over at middle in one of the areas around this mid area now the terrorists can start running their strats when the counter terrorists are pushed back so i will now hop onto terrorist i will restart the game I am going to show you what that looks like. So you have a terrorist who's sitting outside long, looking into the doors, killing anyone who's pushing. Or you could even do it at like the Kiko spot back here. He used to play here. He was notorious for this, jump spotting. You could shoot people as they're pushing through. You can do it from the box over here where you can shoot people over their head. You can camp in this corner or this corner. There are many places you can play, play long from. Places you can play long from. 
Same thing at Beat Tunnels. You can play from this pillar here. You can play from back here. You can look for a push through the crack in the pillar. You can hide in this corner here. You can hide back in this corner. Or you can be at one of these angles behind the box or on the stairs. These are all positions you can push back the counter terrorists to keep them humble and not pushing past this point. And humble over here where they're not pushing past either this point or this point. To take mid, simplest way, smoke mid doors. But the problem is, you can still see over the smoke if you're counter terrorist, and you can see people jumping up, on, sorry, running up to cat. Not so much jumping up on the Xbox, it's a little bit harder to see these guys, but you can definitely see people running across this way. So as you're a terrorist, that smoke, not enough. You need a flash either deep or even a close flash. Because anyone who's looking at this angle over cat is going to get blind by a flash that lands over here as well. If the flash does not need to go deep, this is enough to take a CT off the angle for one to two seconds for you to make your push across to this spot here. Once you're at this point here, that counter terrorist who's in mid, no longer a threat to you. You need a second flash though. You need a flash that will take the person off of this angle here, or this angle here, or this angle here. But before you do that, you can also opt to do things like nade sack behind the stairs if you have a teammate. If you're without a teammate, a singular Molotov will suffice. That clears that angle. You get a flash. You can have the flash thrown from lower B. You can have it thrown from over at this point here. I'll throw as a grenade so you see where it goes. It's just going to explode up here. Anyone who's looking at this area here is going to be blind. And then you just need to come in and clear all the angles that are common. So you come out, clear that, clear that, and clear that. All in one swift motion, you take cat control. Once you have cat control, though, you don't need to go anywhere else. Like, you've got cat. This is when you say to your team, hey, we've got cat control. We can do any number of strategies. We can do a long play. We can do a cat play. We can do a mid to B play. We can do a B play. Or we can do a fake off of any of those variations. Or we could do an exec execution and then stop and do nothing and then re-exec. Um, that's what Cloud9 does a lot. They they do a lot of executions. Wait, wait, wait. Re-execute and go. And what that does is to bait all the counter-terrorist counter smokes and flashes and grenades. But once you have control of Cat, you don't go past this point here. You just fucking stop. That's it. You've got Cat. Now you run into your executions. If you need to push back the mid players... Oftentimes, what you can do is just isolate. And you'll see this when I was sp speaking about Inferno. You just isolate one side of mid where they're doing a crossfire, and you focus on the other. So with this smoke here, and a flash to clear close, you clear close. One person hides behind the door, and he waits for a counter flash to come, and then he'll peek out with it and kill anyone who pushes through. And then you'll have another guy come out, and they'll focus on the other side and make sure that the CTs who are up close in this spot on the scaffold, turtle box, or slant box, are all humbled and playing back in the bomb sites. This is a way to do it. If they're playing humbled and back in the bomb sites, you can go mid to B. You can push up and you can fly right up through the window and attack B with a split from middle and from tunnels, both at the same time crunching on the bomb site. Over at long, there are many ways that you can do a long take. One of the ways I like to do it is to have a smoke that will go and block off the corner here. And this way, an opera who's over here cannot see you as you're coming out the doors. Add a couple of flashes onto that. I like doing a flash where you just throw a flash over the wall. And that's going to get anybody who's playing at this angle here. Anyone who's at this close angle here. Or even anyone who is at the blue box. It sh I don't actually think it will get this guy, but if you throw a second flash and the guy who throws this smoke can come and do this flash as well. I love this flash. It comes over this wall and it'll explode where anybody in pit will get blind, anyone at this close wall will get blind, and anyone at blue bin will get blind from this flash. And it's going to allow players to come out and take control of long with enough cover from the smoke to throw another flash through the smoke and isolate anybody in the pit. Now you have control of Lung, but you've already had control of Cat. So what has just happened? Where are the counter terrorists playing when you do a play like that? 
Well, let's look at the map again. You've taken cat control as a terrorist, which leaves these locations for counter terrorists to play left over. Those are the these are all the main spots that counter terrorists play. Okay? We've just thrown smokes to block off this area here. This is all smoked off. We've thrown flashes to isolate this player, this player, and this player. And we've pushed out players. Can I can I do this? We've pushed out players to go and isolate the player in pit. So this guy is now dead, which remains to have these positions remaining. One, two, three, four. Flush them out. Constantly flush them out. Player up here on cat can throw a Molotov on this position. They can throw flashes. Actually, once there's a terrace in the pit right here, boom, they can see into Goose now. Anybody who's playing at this car position is just fucking dead because Cat and Long both at the same time, pinch them. Isolate them to an area, pinch them together, push them together. Very, very, very simple. This is like slow, methodical play, teamwork-oriented, dust to T-side control. Same thing over at B, though. You can do the exact same thing over at B. Once you smoke off mid, and you've pushed all the counter terrorists back in the bomb site, and they're all playing like somewhere in here, you do the exact same thing. So if I hop back on the T side, restart the game. Once you have cat control pushed back and you have all the t counter terrorists playing humble at A, you can do an A fake and then go out mid to B. You can go out mid to B and leave this guy as the lurker who's going to cut off rotations and pressure A just enough so that the counter terrorists who are playing A do not rotate and help the B players. So if the counter terrorists are here and they're and their teammates over at B are saying, hey, they're coming B, they're coming B, I need help. They're just instantly going to drop down and come and support them and flash through mid and spray you over the smoke or whatever the case may be. But if you're up here and you're applying a tiny bit of pressure, let's say you do a smoke for CT spawn like this, and then you come up here and you molly the bomb site and you throw a flash. Anybody who's playing on A, they're going to be scared of you to come and either do an A hit or you to just kill them as they're rotating down this area right here into CT spawn. They're afraid of you killing them on the ramp or dropping behind them. They're scared if they're pushing through the mid smoke of you being at mid doors. They're scared of you. So you don't have to actually challenge and kill them. You just have to m make yourself known that they know that you're there and they're scared of you just enough that it slows them down for your teammates to go and make the actual push into the B bomb site. So standard B split looks something like this. You'll smoke CT spawn. You'll flash close. Oh, not like that. Well, that was awful. I usually throw from back here, uh, like just like this. Uh, that's for mid doors. That will take anyone off of an NOA stack or anyone who's playing close doors like this, this, or this will get blind. And then that will allow your teammates to push out through the doors. Usually I'll send two people out and one person would sit back here just like this, not peeking, waiting for a counter flash. Because a lot of counter terrorist teams, once they see the smoke coming here, they have one person do something like this, flash, and then they peek off that. Or they'll have a guy flash like this and then push through the smoke. Or they'll have a guy up here throw a flash like this, and then have a person down here peek with it, or a person 3 CT peek, or both peek at the same time. Or a person CT ramp who is the cat rotator, he would come here and throw a flash that will also go and flash mid. So any of those flashes that come from the counter terrace, from B site, from close middle, from CT spawn, or B ramp, you can always handle it by having a guy just hide here, wait for that counter flash to come, and peek out and get all the trade kills. When your teammates are just jumping off to the side blind, jumping up and down, this guy's coming out the doors and actually saving their lives. When you come up mid to B, always want to make sure you run this pathway here. You want to run this way, clear it slant box, and then jump into window and push over. If your teammate's still alive down here, flash over for you. The reason why you want to take that route as opposed to running straight up to the doors like this is because this smoke has a massive gap. Any CTs who are playing back on CT ramp, let's say they're rotating from A, they'll be able to see you and shoot you above the smoke like this and see you running door and see you 
just in this area, just in general. So you always want to make sure you're running outside of their field of vision where they're blocked off by this wall and this box. This is the route you want to take. Of course, if there's a counter terrorist who's here with a smoke grenade in his face and you're mulling sight and flashing over, he's going to be sitting like this waiting for you to spawn drop and he's not going to be looking at your teammates who are pushing out mid to B. That's again why it's very good to have pressure but not a commitment from another player somewhere else on the map. Players at upper B. So, general philosophy, my general philosophy, is that anytime you're attacking an area and you're doing a split, the area that has the majority of players makes first contact. So, if you're doing a mid to B split and you have three players going out mid to B, and one player on cat making the distraction, and one player in upper B tunnels. This player who's at upper B tunnels, he does not make any contact at all. I'm doing a lesson right now. Oh my god. You've, he's just fucking ruined. God, fuck. So, I'll edit this out. It's okay. So this player in upper B tunnels does not make contact until his teammates outside of the bomb site at the doors and at the window make the first contact, pull the counter terrorist just attention towards the doors and the window, and then that is when the terraces in upper tunnels will come in and actually make the pinch and forked attack the enemy. I think that's uh, enough for a T-side philosophy on this map. I'm heavily distracted right now, so I wouldn't be able to talk further if I wanted to. Uh, blame Hotshot GG. Um, God damn it, dude. It's, it's ruined.